If you like hacking and you like kittens, then stay tuned because in this video we will be solving the lovely kitten pictures challenge by the real Brenu. This was a great challenge in the Lead Up Life CTF that we held about a month ago. So without further ado, let's get the real Brenu into a call and let's start solving this challenge. Uh, Brenu, thank you a lot for creating the lovely kitten pictures challenge for the Lead Up Life CTF. Uh, I think it was one of the better challenges that we had. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people solved uh, the first few steps of it, but got stuck in the end or on the second step. So today we are going to walk through what the actual solution was for this amazing challenge to see how we could hack the lovely kitten pictures. So this was a four part challenge. So, well, we'll solve it in these parts as well, but Brennan, I'll give you the stage uh, so that you can explain to us what went into solving this challenge. First of all, when we access the page, um, everyone is going to see these, um, all these kitten pictures um, with their names and stuff. And they're also cute. And very cute. <laughs> and when we look at the source code of the page, let me just disable this thing. Okay. Um, when we look at the source page and go to to the picture, um, we can see that it's being loaded by a PHP endpoint called pictures.php. Let me just click on it and this endpoint has a query parameter called path which receives um, as its value um, a path to the image that um, is going to be loaded. Um, it seems to be a pretty straightforward, a pretty classic case of um, dot dot slash yeah, exactly. Like when stuff. you see a path being loaded as a get parameter dot dot slash at C uh, pass WD, but will that work? Yeah. So we may try something like that. But it just doesn't work. Not um, yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, we may try some different approaches, but um, it's not supposed to work. Um, I don't know if there's any other way of doing it, but um, it's not supposed to work at least. <laughs> <laughs> the intended way of getting the first flag is to identify that only files that are um, inside of the project folder, let's say, are supposed to be, uh, to be loaded. So we could and define as, as a value for the path parameter, the, uh, the index.php file. And huh. now it's downloaded. And we can see the, the first flag here. Okay. Says, so yeah, so only files that were in the, in the web root are able to be loaded. And yeah, this is not yeah. gonna execute the PHP file. It's just going to, well, give it to us, download it in this case. And that gives yeah. us the first flag already of this challenge. And so this one, this is one that was fairly easy um, and that's good. A lot of people solved this, so that's, that's very nice. You could uh, also find it uh, by go looking at the network tab, seeing what changed if you, if you click the picture, uh, uh, seeing that, oh, new pictures are being loaded by making this call. Uh, and that was a, a really fair, fairly straightforward way of doing things, but this is something that, I mean, can occur in real life as well. Uh, dynamic stuff yeah. being loaded using uh, such a system. So, okay, that's how we got the first part and we already have some source code uh, of this page. But obviously we, yeah. we want to fully hack into this lovely kitten pictures uh, server. <laughs> so what is the next step for us to do here? Um, okay, so when we look at this um, file that we just downloaded, it doesn't have any PHP code, actually. It just have the same um, HTML content that we're able to see on the uh, dev tools, the, the browser dev tools. Um, and when we go to the script tag here on the browser, 
uh, we may see another endpoint, which is called catinfo.php. It receives an ID and apparently it loads some information about each kitten, um, the path to, to this next kitten and its name also. Um, we just discovered a way of loading files that are inside of the project. So we may just download this cat info.php file and see what we can get from it. Yeah, so definitely. We, just... I mean, we, we have a way of doing that. We should reuse it. And now we can get uh, the cat info file, hopefully. Yeah. Let's see. And we see that we that seems get. to work. Yay. <laughs> um, now we can see this um, PHP file. It has um, it, it just gets the ID parameter, okay, and it uses this kitten ID as a value for a program that are, that is being executed by Scape Shell CMD. Um, Actually, it's been executed by show exec. And that's what you, what you love to see as an attacker, right? Something that has your <laughs> input being executed as a command. That's a, that's great, but... Yeah. Um, but there's a problem here. Um, this function, let me just go to the PHP documentation. Um, it says, scape shell cmd scapes any characters in a string that might be used to trick a shell command into executing arbitrary commands this function should be used to make sure that any data coming from user input is escaped before this data is passed to the exact or system functions or to the backtake operator so it just means that we cannot just put a um how do, a semi I just forgot the name. Yeah, we cannot just yeah, a semicolon get a new command going because yeah. unless we have some sort of uh, uh, issue in this escape shell CMD, but that is very unlikely. Uh, so we have to find a way around that, I suppose. Yeah, um, but continuing here in the documentation, we can see this warning um, telling us that escape shell CMD. Um, should be used on the whole command string, and it still allows the attacker to pass an arbitrary number, let me just mark it, an arbitrary number of arguments. For escaping a single argument, escape shell org should be used instead. Um, going back to the code here, I don't see escape shell org being used anywhere. Can you see it? No, so uh, that means that the, that warning could apply to us, right? Yeah. Um, so we may try something like that uh, in the cat info.php. So let me just open it in a new tab. Um, it returns some info about this cat number three, which is called the squid. Um, but we may try to add uh, to add new flags. Um, and I have to say that my favorite flag is always the help flag. Yeah. So we might, oh, okay. <laughs> if um, you don't know if how something works, well, ask it how it should work and, and it may tell you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it just shows this banner to us. Um, because this is, the, this is like something executing and showing you the result of a terminal, but then in the web, right? Yeah. Um, and it just shows this, this banner with um, three different flags. This one um, specifically has my attention because it has a beta here and things that are in test, um, yeah. test stages, test phases. Um, usually should have our attention. Um, and we also have a use case here, uh, an example usage. Um, this minus E or dash E um, option should be used to pass a local health check. 
in order to execute it. And in this use case, we have a path to this pictures.sh, which checks if all the kitten pictures are available. Probably it does some curl um, operations and check the um, status code of the responses. But uh, we have this message here also that for security reasons, the local health check, check functionality only allows a request that comes from local host. Okay. So, but this um, thing right now, it like to me, it screams SSRF, right? It screams yeah. <laughs> that is something that we want to look for. But that message tells us that it should be secure, that you can only send requests from the local host. Yeah. Um, and when we, but when I see something like that, um, I remember of a, um, of a very common way of getting, um, SSRFs and open redirects to, let me just add the minus E flag here and this HTTP localhost of chats pictures that it's h let's just see if it works yeah um it completes the health check but um we may try to just add this um at character interesting and and make a reference to somewhere else to some um other address. Um, it's something that we see commonly um, when it comes to SSRFs to open redirects. And that's the case of this challenge. That's how it was, um, that's how this filter was meant to be bypassed. Um, also, I don't know if there's a different way of doing it. Um, <laughs> there might be indeed, but, but yeah, this is a very interesting way because right now you would like type a, a uh, for example, a URL in there and what, what would, uh, how would curl or whatever this backend is using interpret that string. So let's say we type like google.com behind it. How, how would, uh, yeah. it be interpreted? Yeah. Um, and when we. We just copy that. Um, and by looking at this data sage um, in the end, apparently everything that is um, that is put here will be just executed um, because it seems to be a, a shell script, mm -hmm. a shell script file, a bash script. So um, we could just create, for example, a pastebend script with a um, with a reverse shell, something like that. Uh -huh. And I'm going to use uh, rep shells for that. I'm going to generate a, a shell script for, for getting a reverse shell. Um, here I'm running it locally, so I'm just going to use uh, the IP, which leads me outside of the Docker container. <laughs> Yeah, but you could obviously on the real challenge, you could just get yourself use ngrok or whatever, or have your server open to the internet and then that way you get a connection. Yeah, and that's something that someone mentioned on the Discord server that um, Pasteban has this functionality of um, serving the file as, as uh -huh. a just, just as the file amazing itself. functionality. Yeah. yeah. And it really does help a lot. Um, so we could use netcat and create a listener for us. Yes. And here I'm going to be referencing that okay. URL that Pasteben gave um, just gave to us. And bef before we execute that, so so right now we have HTTP localhost at what does that localhost at mean because uh it, it, the value on the screen it says okay it only allows requests that come from localhost so this makes the server think this request is coming from localhost because the the filter is not implemented correctly but why is this a valid request a valid http request oh okay um 
correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it does have something to do with um, when we use this at and uh, whatever is before the at can be used as um, username and password for, um, for example, and when we, let me take GitHub as an example. When I use, when I reference Renu at github.com, I'm telling github.com that Renu is my username there. And it's, um, and to the HTTP protocol, it's something valid. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it also has to do with the basic authentication there. You, you're just authenticating with the server and this is, well, this is valid to the HTTP protocol, like you said, but in this case, oh, the like server user. is not using the correct protocol. It's not parsing it correctly and not filtering correctly, which means that this bypasses, uh, that check. And that's something that's very commonly found in, in real life as well, because it's very hard to be up to date on the entire HTTP protocol and every weird feature it has. So yeah, that's a, mm. a really nice bypass. So shall we execute it and see if we get our reverse shell? Yeah. Let me just see the terminal screen. Yeah, apparently, yes. Um, we have, uh, yeah. We can do okay, this. Yeah, we see something back here. That's, that's really nice. But it's not. Uh, it's not that nice, actually. It's not that nice. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more beautiful, <laughs> but more pretty. Yeah, get a get a proper shell here or a, a, a full TTY shell. Um, okay. That's better. That's better. <laughs> but we have we have RCE on this server. That's a really nice step to take, obviously. Yeah. Um, and where is the next flag? Okay, that's here. Um, we could just pick it up here. Uh -huh. That's okay. Get and bypass with that character. Perfect. Um, we have the second flag. So we currently already have remote code execution, which is great. Uh, so you might say, okay, this is where the story ends, but there are four flags here. And we mm -hmm. notice that we are only the www data user. So what yeah. could we do next? Um, we could go to the, um, something that we could do would be to cat, um, et cetera, and has WD. So we could see, um, all of All the, the users, users. Yeah. Um, we can see that there is this admin user in this level one. Um, we would need to um, authenticate in any of them. So we, we cannot just um, have direct access to uh, one of them, but we can go to the home directory um, and try to see if we can get to the level one. Not okay, but um, can we go to the admin? Not to okay, <laughs> but we may try something like that in order to see what what can we execute as um, the super user, and we can call su um, level one so we can impersonate the level one user. Um, this is actually, in my opinion, the uh, easiest flag of the Yeah, this is something that in, in your uh, privilege, privilege escalation enumeration, you should always try sudo l yeah. to see because oftentimes this is set up by lazy system admins that don't want to bother with people having to ask for per permissions in some cases, and they just go like, okay, here, I'll, I'll give you permissions to do that. Uh, but yeah, it, sudo says, hey, yeah. you can run uh, bin slash su level one as sudo. So, well, that's exactly what we run there. And we see that we are now level one. Yeah, um, I don't know for um, what reason someone would do that, but 
it's here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And now we can go into the home directory and that will give us the third flag. Yeah. Nice. Super, super easy. Super kitten. Privesk. Okay, yeah. cool stuff. So that means there's one more flag to be found in this entire box. So uh, where should we look next? I saw there was a different admin user. Is that where we want to go? Uh, how do we go about that? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, but we cannot. <laughs> we also cannot just um, see uh, its home directory. Um, the sudo dash l uh, worked before. I'm just try that again. Possibly, yeah. I see something. Um, um, it shows us that we can use, um, we can impersonate the admin user in order to execute this git um, pull command. Um, uh, it's interesting because we, uh, there is something when, when it comes to Git, not only Git, but um, different version management uh, tools also that um, Git has a, um, a way of executing script whenever something important and the workflow happens. Um, in the case of Git, it's called Git hooks, hmm. but um, and different tools they might have different names, but essentially they all do the same thing. Whenever something important in the workflow happens, it triggers a script that will be executed. Um, yeah. So so in this case, we know we can execute Git pull as the admin. However, yeah, we want to become the admin, and obviously Git pull is ha doesn't have a way of just giving us the admin account. We were only allowed to execute this one command. But by knowing a lot about Git internals and by knowing that a, a pull hook is going to be executed, we can try to execute something as admin because that Git pull hook will also be executed as admin, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what am I, uh, what are we supposed to do in this case? Um, we could just clone a Git repository. Uh, let me just go to the temp folder and clone, um, let's see. There is this, okay, there is this Git repository, which is called public APIs, but we may uh, clone any, any repository actually. Okay, so we're cloning that repository now. Yeah. Um, because we actually, need a repository to do a git pull, right? Yeah. Um, what we're going to do here is um, we have a git repository. When we clone it, it is in the latest version of itself and um, the most updated one. Uh, but we may just get back one or two versions and update it again. And we may update it again with git pull. And when we do that, we may trigger this script. Um, so let me go to the public APIs. Okay. Um, we have the content of the project here. And as I said, um, it is in its most updated version. So we have to make it a little bit older, let's say. Um, I'm going to use git reset for that. Okay. And now we just so now, add to a different commit, like the, the commits right beforehand. So yeah. now that we can execute a, a successful git pull. Yeah. Um, um, so, okay, as you can see, I have a, a thing that um, 
I always try to list uh, what's in the directory. Um, I cannot avoid doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go to the dot git directory. And there is this directory called hooks. Let's go there too. And we may see um, a bunch a, of hooks. A, yeah, a bunch of, of, of sample hooks here. Um, we're going to create one called post merge. So here we just created it, post Which merge. Which is going to happen, well, after post a merge, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the um, this git pull command, um, if I'm not um, making a mistake here, um, it, it first um, execute a fetch, a, a git fetch, and after the fetch, it does execute a merge. Yeah. Um, so the per post merge is the trigger that will be executed in the end of the whole git pull um, command is executed, let's say. Um, so here... Um, and this is just a, a bash file, so... Yeah. And I'm going to be executing the bash. Um, why am I just executing the, the bash? It's because um, the idea is to be executing it as the admin. Um, so as the command is being executed at the, as the admin user, we may just spawn a shell session let's say, um, as we were this specific user, as we were um, the admin. Um, I think that that's it. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's hope uh, that this works and that that makes us the admin. So we, we're going to save this file as post merge. Uh, let's say, OK, it's here. Um, and I'm try. Uh, now I'm going to try to execute the sudo minus sudo dash u admin git pull. Um, here I'm telling sudo that um, I'm going to be impersonating specifically the admin user um, because by default it would be trying to impersonate the root one. Yeah. Uh, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just says that we cannot do uh, whatever we we are trying to do, but that's because um, when we are inside the temp folder, um, whatever we create have um, have have more um, how should I call it more restrictive permissions in a way that. Uh, when user doesn't have permissions to um, write stuff um, in a file or um, in, in the directory that becomes to a different one, yeah, um, we don't have permissions because um, uh, whatever we create inside the temp folder has more um, restricted permissions in a way that um, not everyone can mess up with everything. Um, the name of uh, this name, temp folder, may pass the idea that um, anyone can mess up with everything, but that's not the case. Um, but we, as the level one user, um, we may define um, we may define that people have the permission to. Um, to change some stuff in, in our project, in our Git repository. Um, and we may use it with the chmod command. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using chmod-r757. Um, 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 and I'm going to be pointing to slash temp slash, um, what's the name of the repository? Public. APIs. Okay, yeah, so we're changing the permissions on that repository so that it, it would uh, work. Yeah. Um, 
Now let's try again the pseudo dash u admin git pull again. Hopefully it's going to work. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, OK, it didn't work, actually, um, because it says that my local changes to uh. some to this file would be overwritten. It doesn't let me. Um, uh, it doesn't let me finish that process that I that I told of executing the fetch and then the the merge. Uh, but let's see what's happening here. Ooh, okay. It tells us that um, that a lot of things were changed. Let me just try to execute the restore command here and see the status again. Okay. Okay, so now that everything uh, is up to date, we should be able to do a get pull properly. Okay, now we are um, the admin. Exactly, um, okay, wow. So what happened is we did the, the our git fetch, we did our merge, and after the merge, our bash script got executed, and now we are the, the admin in, in that new batch, bash shell that we have right now. Yeah. And that means that we should uh, be able to access the, the last flag, I, I suppose. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. <laughs> yeah, it just did work. OK. Um, and that's it. And that is the entire challenge. So yeah, yeah quick, quick recap of the challenge. So in the beginning, we had uh, a, uh, a local file inclusion where we could include certain files, but only in, in the web route. Uh, however, yeah. we could leak source code with that. And from that source code, we found a, a PHP endpoint that was executing a, a, a shell command where we had some user input into it. It was kind of protected, but we found a way to bypass that. And um, uh, we found a way to execute commands nonetheless on the machine, which we used to get a reverse shell and, and get properly onto the machine. Then we just saw that we just had rights to become the level one user. And from there, as the level one user, we had git pool permissions or permissions to run git pool as the admin account. And then we used a cool uh, git pool hook to, to, uh, to get around that and to become the admin on the server. And that was a really, really cool uh, challenge, in my opinion. Um, I liked it a lot. It was very stable as well. And a lot of people had a lot of fun with it. I got a lot of comments of people saying, hey, that was a really cool challenge. So thank you a lot for creating it. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy we, we could host it at this uh, at the event. So that was the full challenge explained to us by Brenu. Now, after our talk about the challenge, I also asked him some questions relating to security and all that. So if you want to tune in for that, then watch the next section. If you don't, then that's also totally okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you back in another one. But for now, let's get back into this interview. So Brenu, uh, you created this challenge. Where did you get the ID for creating this? What was the thought process that went into, into all of it? Uh, okay. Um, first of all, um, this theme, let's say this cat's theme, um, is because I love kittens. <laughs> um, Who doesn't? I have to say that. <laughs> no, but um, I have to say that the first thing when I do when I wake up is um, I pick up my phone, I go to that Instagram search bar because when we don't type anything, it just suggests to us a, a lot of a lot of things. And I spend the first like 10, 15 minutes of my day just watching those cat videos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I love that. that. Um, when I... Uh, um, I think that I received that the message in Discord uh, about making about creating a challenge. I think it was in January, and I was reading. I forgot the name of it. Real world bug hunting that the book, and I just um, when I got to that topic about remote code execution, I saw that. Cape Shell CMD thing. 
I found uh, I thought that it would um, it would be really interesting to have it in a challenge. It's something that um, probably a bunch of you who solved the the challenge um, already knew about, but um, it's been just a few months since I've been um, focusing more into security. So everything to me is really new. And the whole uh, the whole challenge in, in more technical terms um, were was actually uh, was around this uh, scape shell CMD thing, this um, second flag. But then uh, the rest got uh, built around that from there. No, yeah. really cool. I, I love the story about cats. I am I am totally a cat person as well. Uh, <laughs> so the next question then should be: uh, Do you have any cats? Are you gonna get cats in the future? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually I just um, I had cats in the past. I don't have any more. But um, in the future, I'm going to have cats again. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, what about uh, the future, but then maybe more professionally or more in the, in the security field? What, what are your aspirations? Do you want to find a job in security? Do you just want to keep this as a hobby? Do you want to do bug bounty hunting? What, what is like your goal in the future of, of where you really want to be? Um... I today I have security as a job. Oh, oops, I have as a hobby. But um, my goal is to uh, work with that. Um, today I work with um, development. I'm a web developer and in more general aspects. But my goal is to work with cybersecurity. Um, I feel like I'm more into a formal job than bug bounty. It's um, uh, bug bounty is is amazing, but um, sometimes I I feel um, that um, you know the thing of uh, of you cannot um, you just found an issue and you cannot. Um, explore it and, and see where it can where it may go. Um, sometimes I feel like um, how am I supposed to say this? No, you um, you want to go further than just finding the vulnerability yeah. and see what what can yeah, you achieve yeah. with that? Oh you know, yeah, I, I think that that's valid because at Bug Bounty you're always obviously working uh, on on sensitive real real data and it can often be difficult. For companies to give yeah. permission to continue there, uh, that's a valid concern, I think. Uh, and they're and they're absolutely right about it. I mean, because um, we have like thousands and thousands of hunters, and um, it's better for them not to trust everyone. <laughs> yeah, say. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that's that's uh, good to hear. So you want to get a job in security. And then yeah. uh, what I like to say is a lot of people should get a job in security, but then if they have free time in their uh, in, in an empty afternoon, bug bounty is always still open. It's it's not uh, really always comparable to a job. Obviously, you have the top people that can do it full time, but for a lot of people, it can just be a fun evening thing as well. But uh, you want to get a job in security. Is that a, more a red team kind of job, a pen tester, or, or do you want to become a SOC analyst or a blue teamer? What, what, what direction do you want to go in? Um, probably a red teamer or a pen tester. Um, I, don't, I don't see myself as a blue team, um, as a blue team guy, actually. Um, it would be better uh, for me I would prefer uh, if it was uh, in a red team or or as a pen tester and um, coming back to the to that the bounty thing um, even uh, even have any formal job in cybersecurity um, a bounty uh, will still be something really amazing because we uh, we would always have a um, we would always have a 
uh, an environment where we have always something new to to test um, systems that we um, that we haven't seen before. Yeah, cool stuff. I I, I, I like that. Uh, so that's really cool. So soon enough, we'll see you uh, on on some pen test team. Uh, that that would that would be great to see. Uh, besides that, uh, is is there any place where people can find you right now? Because I know that you create some blog posts and all that. Any anywhere where people can follow you to stay up to date on what you're building, what you're doing, uh, all that. Um, I have a Twitter account, which is the real Breno. Um, my LinkedIn to have this. Um, I, I have this nickname on my LinkedIn too. Um, you guys may find me on the Integrity Discord server, and I think that that's it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll put links to to all of that down below in the description uh, for you guys, uh, and also a link to the Integrity Discord server because that's a a great place to to connect with people and talk with people. Uh, but Brenu, thanks for coming on. Uh, I really enjoyed you explaining the challenge. I think this was, like I've said it before, but it is just a really, really cool, fun challenge. Uh, I liked it a lot and I know that a lot of people did as well. So thanks for coming on and explaining it. And well, I hope to see a lot more of you in the future. It was a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.